It is absolutely insane to look around and see how many cylinder heads that there are just laying around in all different forms. So I'm out here in sunny Southern California today shooting some videos with my friends here at Airflow Research that manufacture the cylinder heads that I will be running on the Love. Then I'm also driving this really cool Nova station wagon with a turbo LS in it that my friend Garrett let me borrow, but more on that later. For now, I'm gonna show you guys some of the history, show you guys how Airflow Research manufactures their cylinder heads. So right now we're in the loading docks where all our castings are received in before they start the manufacturing process. So as you can see right here, we have various castings all laid out on different pallets, getting ready and sorted. Now, once they're received in, in their raw form, one of the first operations we do is what we call the wing op. And what that does is it takes these wings that you see on the side of the cylinder head, machine them flat, and then drills in the mounting holes that will bolt them to every single fixture from the ship. All right, back up. So step one is our wing op. As you can see, there are these rough wings on the end of each one of our cylinder heads. Those will get machined flat and then drilled for mounting on the various fixtures that we use to manufacture our cylinder heads. It is absolutely insane to look around and see how many cylinder heads that there are just laying around in all different forms from, you know, ones that just came in to ones that look you know, really close to the head. So step two in the machining process, after the wing ops are performed, each cylinder head will be bolted up onto each one of those tombstones. Each tombstone will hold five pairs of heads. In this pallet behind me, we have the capability of holding up to 32 separate tombstones. So you take that times five, that'll tell you how many cylinder heads we can have locked and loaded that can run lights out. Cool. How many cylinder heads come through here and get chipped out like every week or every month? On any given time through the year, we could be shipping 400 to 600 pairs of fully assembled cylinder heads per month. Wow. That is insane. So that machine or that like arm thing that's moving right now, that's picking up the tombstones to then have cylinder heads be loaded onto it right now? So at each center, we have operators that will load the tombstones and once they're ready, the pallet system will go ahead and pull it, load it into its respective grid or cell on that rack and then once the machine is ready, it will automatically pull it and load it to the proper machine. That is absolutely insane. It's just it's crazy to see that thing go back and forth just like it is now. And then to see all of the different cylinder heads loaded up onto one, that is really cool. These CNC machines will, will go ahead and cut all the flat ends of the cylinder head as well as drill all the various bolt holes on the cylinder head. Oh, okay, cool. From the valve cover rail, to the deck of the cylinder head, intake interface, as well as the exhaust interface. Those will all happen on our horizontals. That is so crazy to look at what a cylinder head looks like before it ever turns into even something like that, or definitely something like that. You know, it's, it's insane what these machines are capable of doing and what, you know, these guys are capable of doing here. So what is it that these guys are still doing? So this station right here, is where we do all our um, flat milling or angle milling. So for a customer that has a custom build that needs a specific combustion chamber volume to hit a target compression ratio, this is where it gets done. So right here, we have one of our big block Chevy cylinder heads, uh, probably for a marine application. And the reason I know that is because it has our black anodizing. And that is typically used to slow down the corrosion process for whether it's salt water, brackish water, or even fresh water in a lake. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I didn't know you guys did that, so that's really cool. That is insane. And that coating is the entire casting, so the water jacket and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. So right here, we have the tool holder for our horizontals. 
As you can see, there's each one of these cylindrical locations and it can hold various bits. Now we use everything from rough cutters to fine cutters, uh, just depending on what part of the process it's going through. And the reason we do that is to, number one, improve the finish on the cylinder head and also to minimize the amount of wear on each tool. So after our raw castings come off of one of four horizontal CNC machines, this is what they look like. So all the flat sides, valve cover rail, intake interface, bolt holes are all drilled. Wow. And then they're ready to go on the CNC five axis machines. That's so cool to think that the castings that we were just looking at over there turn into this, you know, after, I mean, one, you know, part of the process. Correct. Just, that's amazing, like the finish that it can have is straight after that machine. It's so awesome. So once the heads come off of the four axis machines, they get loaded up in bins or onto carts where they'll be waiting for their time on one of our 14 five axis CNC machines. Now, one thing that I didn't go over earlier is you'll see every one of our cylinder heads has this white barcode sticker. This barcode sticker is basically the DNA or the lifeblood of your cylinder heads. And it gets used in a couple different ways. On the manufacturing side, at every station, this barcode gets scanned by the operator as it's loaded into the machine. Once it's scanned, the network knows exactly what pair of heads are loaded, where they're located, and what program needs to be pulled off of the server in order for the machining to take place. So I was looking at all of these marks in here and I was asking Tim what exactly those are. I didn't know if these were, you know, a hurt head or something, but that is actually what that machine right behind you is doing, is smoothing all that out, right? That's correct. So these heads, they're waiting for their time on the five axis machines. Our five axis machines will go ahead and cut all the chambers, intake runners, as well as the exhaust runners. That was so From good. there, that'll determine if it's a 185 head, a 195, and also the chamber volume, you know, 64 cc's, 72 cc's, whatever it calls out for that specific product line. So this machine right here off to the side, this is our toolbox. It's basically the locker system for every one of our cutting tools. So as you can see on this cart right here, we have various bits and cutters. Inside the toolbox, in order for an operator or engineer to pull out something, they need to log in with their credentials and the machine will keep a record of when a part was checked out, when it was returned, and also who has it. So in the event that another operator is looking for that exact same tool, the machine will tell them, go talk to so-and-so, because they what? currently have it checked out. That is really cool. That's smart. Yeah, because I mean, with how many tools you guys do have, I'm sure things were starting to get lost and you know misplaced, and so now it's like if something does get lost, obviously that thing tattletales on whoever lost it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> All right, once the heads are done with the five axis machining off the Haas machines, they then get loaded up onto one of these carts in preparation for their valve jobs. Once they're loaded on the machines, they'll go ahead and get their CNC valve job performed. And what I mean by CNC valve job is this machine is known as a single point cutter. So basically you have one tool that's cutting the entire profile of your valve job, whether that's a five angle or or a three angle valve job, it all gets done with one tool. There's no need for various stones to do the different angles. How are you liking it? I think it's pretty nuts. What were you saying? I said the fact that you can see each individual, what did you call it? Each pass. Each on pass. The, on the, um, so we have the intake runner and the exhaust runner. And as Shannon was pointing out, you can see each pass of the cutter in that CNC machining. That is so cool. Once the cylinder heads have received their valve jobs, the next stage is pressure check. Basically what this does is it checks the integrity of the cylinder head to make sure that it can hold pressure, like when it's on an engine and in a running application. So after pressure check, the heads are then moved to the cleaning room. Well, they'll go down into a water bath, they'll get blown off, and then pass through this little hole in the wall ready for assembly. One of the things that we do to minimize the chance of error is that every one of our cylinder heads travels with a work order. This work order has all the information on the cylinder head just like that barcode. So once it gets to 
the assembly area here, our operators can pull the proper components. Whether it's springs, retainers, locks, it's all documented on that work order. Another thing we do to increase efficiency is also we'll go ahead and pre-package a lot of the components, the valves and the springs, so that the assembler or the operator doesn't have to worry about counting the quantities and it just kind of makes their day a little more streamlined. Heavy duty plastic bags, even before they go in the boxes. Right now, we're in the shipping and receiving area where Alvaro is actually loading up a set of Renegade small block Ford heads to get ready and shipped out to our customers. As you'll see, heads are packed nice and tight, heavy duty cardboard to protect them during transit. As well, on either end of the box, we have this sheet of plywood with thick foam padding that goes in to protect its cylinder head before it arrives at your doorstep. I thought this was really cool when I got my cylinder heads because it was something that I didn't really expect. And so to see how much time you guys put into, you know, packaging and making sure the cylinder heads, you know, stay in a operable manner, you know, they don't get dented or, you know, broken in any way. It's, it's really cool to show, you know, that amount of like thought, you know, gets put into something as simple as shipping heads out. Correct. And we fully understand, you know, our customers, they're spending a lot of money on our product. And they've probably been working on this build probably for years, first on paper, saving up the money. And we want to make sure we don't ruin the experience once they arrive at their doorstep. Now, what you saw was a pair of small block heads getting loaded up. But for those of you with a big block Chev engine or even an LS3, those heads physically get mounted to a sheet of plywood with padding. Oh, so there's no yeah. chance of them moving in the box at all. That is super cool. So AFR started way back when in the late 60s, 70s um, by a man named Warren Brownfield. Uh, Ken Sperling at the time, as I learned the story, was his head designer, Porter. Um, and they were working together uh, in a little shop out of Burbank, California. You know, as a lot of the icons in our industry did, it was basically, you know, someone's garage or a small shack where they were just wanting to go fast. Warren Brownfield and Ken Sperling were working with some of the fastest teams across the country, um, whether that was NASCAR, NHRA, Marine, uh, you name it. Uh, they quickly developed um, a reputation for having some of the best performing cylinder heads uh, out there at the time. Sometime during the mid to late 70s, Ken Sperling actually purchased Airflow Research from Warren Brownfield. Warren at the time had got the bug of wanting to improve the casting process for aluminum. Uh, he wasn't happy with the examples that were out in the marketplace at the time, and that's where the two split uh, back then, and where Ken became the owner and head um, designer porter for those products. Uh, Brownfield on his own went to develop a process that he termed as EMPP. Uh, basically, it's comparable to like a cast billet at the time. So, you know, mid, late 70s. Shortly after perfecting that process, Warren Brownfield opened up Brownfield cylinder heads. Somewhere in the 80s, Ken Sperling actually purchased Brownfield cylinder heads and rejoined it with Airflow Research. That allowed him to offer a full turnkey aftermarket cylinder head for the masses. The motorsports, I mean, that was something that was just in Ken Sperling's blood. I mean, he was a go fast kind of guy. You know, it didn't matter if it was motorcycles, cars, boats, he was always looking to go faster. You know, he just had this talent, this intuition on what would work when it came to airflow and you know what modifications to make to those castings. So airflow research for the future we're looking at a couple different directions. Um, number one is getting back to our roots of um, higher forms of racing and what I mean by that is um, providing product for 
customers that are really looking to push the envelope, whether that's a drag and drive type of series or a, a no prep type of race, yeah. or if they're looking to go compete at Pikes Peak or in Optima's Ultimate Streetcar Challenge. You know, we are partnering with a lot of different types of drivers across multiple disciplines of motorsports, just trying to understand the specifics to each discipline so that we can take that back to the engineering team and really refine products and deliver things to market that customers are looking for and asking for. We're in Santa Monica Beach. <laughs> is this your first time here? It is my first time and it's so freaking cool. Absolutely amazing to drive and it's just so much fun. 